Welcome to the YouTube Creators Hub podcast, where we help you conquer the internet one video at a time. We cover everything from how to start a YouTube channel to how to make a video go viral. And now, here's your host, the one and only Dusty Porter. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the last episode of 2022, episode 332. It's one of my favorite shows of the year where we get together with Nick and D. Nimmin and we talk about the state of YouTube going into the new year. In this case, it's 2023. We've been doing this now going on four years, uh, and I'm so excited for you guys to hear this almost hour-long conversation with these guys as we talk about the things that have happened in 2022, the biggest stories and biggest things we believe uh, will impact the platform going forward and what we believe to be the uh, future as well going into the new year. So definitely stick around for that. I want to say a big thank you to all of you. It's been another wonderful year here on the podcast. We've continued to grow. Uh, We haven't hit that flat line just yet, and I'm so excited that this show is continually being introduced to new YouTube creators, new content creators that want to know a little bit more about what it takes and the strategies and techniques that uh, certain folks who are successful on the platform and other uh, content sites utilize. And that's that's what we've done here on the show. Uh, and I'm so thankful for all of you. So if you haven't already, you can subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to your podcast, <laughs> uh, whether that be Stitcher, Spotify, Apple. It doesn't really matter. We're all over the Internet. Uh, just hit subscribe. And every Friday when we go live with a new episode, you will be notified And it's been another wonderful year with the fine folks over at TubeBuddy being the main sponsor here on the podcast. If you're looking for a tool going into the new year and beyond that can help you uh, shave hours off of your workflow and just make you a better creator just off the sheer uh, efficiency uh, of the tool itself, uh, TubeBuddy is that one tool. And you can use everything that TubeBuddy has to offer for an entire month, 30 free days. If you use our link, it'll obviously help us out, but it will help you out in return. Also. A huge thank you to the folks over on patreon.com slash Dusty Porter. If you support us over there, you will get your name and channel shouted out once a month here on the podcast, as well as being part of our creator discord, where all of those folks talk YouTube shop all throughout um, uh, the the week and the days. Uh, And we're also going into the new year, going to be doing a, a Zoom call where everyone who supports at the $5 tier or higher will get everything that I just mentioned plus that Zoom call where we get on, talk about our channels, things we've got going on. Uh, it's just going to be a really cool community, and I plan on just boistering that, uh, boistering, bolstering that in the new year uh, and do even more fun things, maybe some behind-the-scenes look, uh, some cut stuff from the podcast, maybe even some extra stuff. Uh, so if that sounds like something fun to you, definitely go over there and do that. This week, we have Andrew Gibbs with Quick Tech Videos and Lesser Known Adventures over on YouTube. We have Corbin White, Nathan Miller, Don Karamik, and Anthony Pizzuto. You guys are amazing. Thank you for supporting me over there. It's just another way to help us make sure we have the funds and the time necessary to make this podcast the best that it possibly can be. All right, sit back, pop your AirPods in, headphones on, start your walk, and just get ready for a 45-minute plus conversation about YouTube with two of the smartest guys that I know. So let's go ahead and jump into this week's conversation. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the YouTube Creators Hub podcast. Not exactly sure uh, what episode number this is. I will make sure to let you guys know that in the intro. Uh, This is one of my favorite episodes of the year. We've been doing this now. I've looked back uh, before we hit record. This is our fourth year of doing this. I know everyone who listens to the show really looks forward to the show, um, and the time that these guys are willing to dedicate and and, and help me produce this show uh, with their knowledge is amazing. I'm joined today by by Nick and D. Nimmin. Uh, they are amazing friends. Uh, they are also amazing creators, and they have some super, super uh, fun things going on that we'll definitely be talking about on the show. Uh, but I want to introduce them to you today. Uh, Nick, how are you doing today, sir? Dusty, I am doing fantastic. I'm super excited to have this conversation today. As always, always looking forward to, you know, kind of predicting, you know, the things that are going to be coming up here in the very near future and the long term future when it comes to content creators and just kind of this ecosystem that we um, that we're all part of. That's it. And D, how about you, my friend? How are you? I'm doing great. This is uh, this is our fourth time together, correct? Fourth time together. Fourth time together. I'm here for it. 
Yeah. <laughs> when it when it gets to the end of the year around October, I, I get to think I'm like, okay, I need to message these guys. I need to see yeah. if they're they're on board. And every year that never once have they said, oh, I'm too busy or. Uh, you know, and they could say that, but they don't. They uh, they always nah, say that they won't come. We are uh, we're going to make this happen. And uh, for you guys, I do want to say publicly, as I have already said off air, uh, it is much appreciated. Uh, this is indeed our state of YouTube uh, 2022 going into 2023 episode. Uh, so I guess I want to open the show with this. Um, Nick, I want you to uh, just open up just with a brief information about kind of what you've been up to this year in 2022. And then D will go to you. For me personally, I've um, just been, you know, on the grind, like, you know, a lot of other content creators, um, just doing a lot of live streaming. Um, I've been, you know, doing a lot of just, you know, content in general. I've uploaded less this year than I have in previous years, Mm -hmm. and I've done more live streams this year than I've done in previous years. So um, for me, you know, just kind of focusing on that, focusing on, you know, some of the projects that D and I have, some projects that, um, you know, that I'm also working on on the side, Um, you know, those types of things have been the things that have kept me busy for 2022 um for me personally how about you d well i wish i could say that i've been uploading regularly to my youtube channel but (laughs) that wouldn't be (laughs) that wouldn't be truthful if i said that Uh, so as you know i think the last time we had this conversation i was stuck in mexico Mm -hmm. you remember that i was Mm. stuck in mexico for two years with my girlfriend because of the pandemic i have since been able to get back to thailand i've been back to thailand for six or seven months roughly nice and we've transitioned a corner of our the Nimmin Live streaming studio into a full-blown music production studio. Right. So Nick and I have a music re- a free music resource called creatormix.com and we've been building out an awesome studio over here just to make even more music. So I've been focusing a lot on that, taking a little bit of a break from videos. I have been making videos just not regularly. And I am proud to announce that we have also been dusting off the cobwebs here on the Nimmin Live streaming set. Mm-hmm. Nick and I are about to start streaming together again. I I cannot wait for that. Uh, I would like to know, on a, as a side note, um, when D uh, made the journey uh, from his, um, uh, whatever you want to call his two-year stint down there in Mexico, and you guys saw each other in person for the first time. Was there a a, a man hug? Was there a side hug? Was there a fist bump? I mean, what what kind of uh, reaction did we get? Hug, definitely, yeah, hugs. Hug it I out. I got emotional. I oh, got emotional. Wow. Like I'll be honest, man. Like, you know, when when the you know when the pandemic you know first started and all that with you know D getting stuck over there, me over here. You know, there was a period of time to where, you know, because nobody knew what was going to happen. Right. Oh, yeah. Nobody knew how out of control things were going to get or how bad things were going to get at that point in time. And I in my mind, I had this thing where I'm like, man, I hope I'm going to be able to, like, you know, see D again. Mm-hmm. And um, and then, you know, like I had that worry for a really long time. And then when he was finally able to come back, you know, that first hug. Um, like I got emotional. I cried, you know, a little That's bit awesome. um, just out of, you know, happiness and just out Love of, it. you know. Um, joy for being able to, you know, just be there, you know, in his presence again, you know, being able to see him and touch him and hug him and talk to him, you know what I mean? Well, man, so, um, I am, you know, uh, so, you know, it was a, it was a pretty cool, pretty I, cool moment. I'm so glad, I'm so glad you made it back, man. I, I, uh, I know, you know, you, you made the best of it. You had such a positive attitude every time I talked to you about it, but you, uh, to, to be back home, to be able to be, get back on the stream grind with, with Nick. And, uh, I, I look forward, uh, to the future and I'm just, I'm glad you're back. Um, so that's, I'm glad uh, I'm back too. I had to grab Nick and say, man, get a hold of yourself. We're out here in a parking lot. <laughs> Pull what yourself you together. We're in public, <laughs> oh, man. Get it together, man. What? No, it was, it was very emotional. Oh, we actually took a selfie together. I believe we sent it to our mom and both of us were teary eyed. Um, I, I, um, I bet your mom did it, tore her up. Yeah. I mean, you know, Nick and I are really close. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's, know, we're very that's one too. thing that I, uh, that I, I, I don't envy because my sister and I are very close too, but, uh, I, I'm very, uh, it's something that I, I look up to for you guys. You guys are very close and, and you guys look out for each other and that's that's awesome. Yep. All right. Um, so with that being said, um, I want to start with the question and I'm, D we'll start with you. What do you think is the biggest thing that YouTube did this year um, to, to move the needle uh, for creators? Wow, you know YouTube to their credit, they have been on fire releasing just new feature after new feature after new feature. Mm-hmm. I Man, off the top of my head, I can't pinpoint one thing specifically, but I will say the attention that they are putting on YouTube shorts Mm -hmm. and how they're making those better and they're tweaking things to make it better for people who are interested in YouTube shorts. I'm going to, I'm going to 
put my my bet there on, on, on YouTube Shorts and say their focus on that has been really impressive. But they've been knocking it out of the park lately. Really impressed with a lot of things that they've been adding to the platform. Yeah, they've they've been on a roll lately. I feel like they've got some some different people in place who are really giving them some good feedback. Um, and I feel like it's on all fronts, not just on the the vertical short video stuff. I believe that um, they're making some really good changes on you know on every end of the spectrum. You know, vertical video they're making improvements. Uh, the, the normal uploaded vods, their you know videos they're making improvements. Live streaming, their their you know gifted memberships, yeah. and, and there's just so many different things they're doing. Uh, Nick, what about you? Yeah, I, I I think the biggest contribution that they made this year would be making the connection between short form and long term con- or long form content in viewer history. Mm-hmm. So previously, before this year, um, it was where if somebody interacted with your YouTube Shorts, there wasn't a record of them um, essentially interacting with your content in a way that where they would recommend your long form content to people that they detected that are enjoying your shorts content. Yes. And they are still trying to, you know, create that connection between the short form and long form even stronger. Um, But they've already made that bridge to where now if somebody watches a few of your shorts and they enjoy your short content, they're more likely to get recommended your long form content, which is huge because, you know, one of the things that has always been a struggle for content creators since shorts came out was, okay, so I'm growing these audiences in YouTube Shorts, but how do I get them to my long-form content? That's been just a huge, huge pain point for content creators. But YouTube is slowly filling that gap, but those first steps started this year. And in addition to them logging that on their end algorithmically, they've also made it to where you can have a direct link from your YouTube Shorts if you sample out content directly out of one of your long-form videos. Mm -hmm. So with those two things combined, one, they've made it easier for viewers to get recommended the content that is longer if they've watched your shorts, but then they've also made it to where you can create content easily by sampling it directly out of your, uh, out of your longer form content into a short. And then if somebody watches that short, they can follow a direct link back to your long form content as well. So I think all of those things are the biggest contributions. And then when people are being aggressive with uploading shorts and they're aggressive with uploading long form content, now both, directions can kind of work to benefit each other. I think that's a that's a huge bonus for content creators. And I think that's going to gain much bigger benefit or a lot more benefit um, as time you know continues to pass. And I we believe that feature is called re- remixing remix. Correct? Well, no, no, no. Th- that's if you are sampling someone else's. So oh, this so is where you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the one that I'm talking about is where you can just sample your own directly. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. There's a, a couple of things there too. We we talked about this. I listened to our our episode from uh, from last year. I did it when we were on a trip a couple of weeks back, and we mentioned uh, a good bit about if they really wanted to, to to really see some growth in the vertical video space, the short space on YouTube, they would need to do a better job of presenting that content because at the time it was very very jumbled. Uh, you would go to someone's YouTube channel and you would see a YouTube short that looked different than a regular uploaded video. And then you would see a live stream that would, you know, be tagged as a stream. So it was all in one place. Now they have done something that I have been asking for forever. Yeah. And they've put YouTube shorts on their own tab. Uh, they have streams on their own tab. Uh, they have uploaded videos as their own tab. And now YouTube is becoming more of a social network as it always has been. But in a sense that you have these different areas for different categories, which I believe is huge for the the longevity of what they're trying to do gigantic I, yeah i agree i love how they cleaned up the home page right they cleaned up our our individual channel pages mm-hmm. because i hated going in there and just see you know if somebody's very aggressive on shorts and they're uploading a short every day mm-hmm. you might go to their page previously and have to look through 30 40 50 60 shorts before you would get to a, a piece of long form content so i agree with you dusty i, I love that they did that Another thing about that that I think is cool also is now because they have separated everything is it also only shows the type of content that a creator makes. So if you're a viewer and you end up going to somebody's channel page because you enjoyed their content, you can quickly see, hey, are they also making shorts? Should I keep an eye out for their live streams? Things like that. Because if they're not using those features, then they're not showing up on on your channel page either, which is pretty cool. 
Yeah, that that is. I remember also a conversation we had, uh, you know, last year and the year prior about live streaming and about, you know, do streams affect the analytics and the results of your channel? Now that conversation is cropping up when it comes to YouTube shorts. I've had YouTube shorts creators come on the podcast and tell me one way or the other. Um, Nick, we'll start with you and then go to D if you have anything to say about this. Uh, do you believe uh, that YouTube shorts affect positively or negatively other aspects of someone's channel if they want to create, you know, if they want to do shorts, if they want to do streaming and they want to do regular videos uploaded on their channel, is that something that that's that you would suggest? As long as everything is in alignment with the audience that you're trying to reach with your content, mm -hmm. then I would say it's a go ahead. Yeah. Um, if you are wanting to offer something that is different in, a, in shorts or in live streams than you do with your long form content or something different in your long form content than you do with your shorts or whatever, then in that particular case, I would definitely recommend, you know, finding another channel to do that on, you know, or creating another channel to do that on or something like that. But as long as everything's in alignment, then in that particular case, you should be fine. But there are people, you know, that have posted all kinds of screenshots and things like that showing where, you know, they, they published, you know, a lot of long form content and they publish shorts and then they'll show screenshots where you can kind of attribute the moment in time to being around the same time that they published a short and then you'll see like their stats drop off and things like that. But with those screenshots, um, those typically don't come with a lot of context <laughs> in terms of, you no. know, like, well, hey, what are you uploading over there? You know, like, are you, is that, you know, targeting a different audience and those types of things. But, um, but as long as you are focused on making sure that whatever it is that you put out, that you're trying to serve that same audience and deliver, you know, that, that same value to the, to the same audience, then you'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. See? Yeah, I agree with everything Nick just said. And I I think it's a matter of just meeting your audience where your audience is. Mm -hmm. You're going to have some people who like long-form content. You're going to like some people who like shorts. You're going to have some people who love to hang out in your live streams. And having the ability to meet that audience wherever they may be, and now things are, are organized and, and clean, I, I think it's great. I want to know, you know like with Nick that. Said, go ahead, Nick. Go ahead. I was just saying, with that also, like when – um, you know, in, in terms of like meeting people where they're at, there's also the side of things of not just, you know, what it is that they like, but also just meeting people like where they have the time. Cause you know, like D was saying, you know, you have where some people will hang out and, you know, a three or four hour live stream, no problem at all. <laughs> but then some people they're just, let's say just to go ahead and put it out there. Let's say they're, you know, using the bathroom for a little bit and they're like, Hey, I just want to run through some shorts because I'm not going to be in here long. Mm -hmm. Um, so then that gives you that opportunity to have, you know, those different touch points based on, you know, like whatever amount of time they have you have something that they can consume. Mm. If you have kids, you're in the bathroom for a whole lot longer. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> um, the, place that, the place where you find peace. Escape, yeah. escape, right, yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I'm just, just messing with you guys. Um, I want to, um, your overall opinion on shorts and what would you both do to improve them? D, we'll start with you. My overall opinion on YouTube shorts I think it's a fantastic place to be put in front of people who do not yet know who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, to use it as, I don't want to say bait, but it's, it's kind of like fishing, right? You can upload a lot of shorts, and YouTube is really good at putting them in front of a new audience, uh, putting them inside the shorts feed. And you also get traffic. You can browse traffic and search traffic, and all the other traffic sources do apply to shorts. So I think for that, it's fantastic. Um, I, I, I think – when I'm looking at people's channels and people are like, hey, I, I'm not having any luck with shorts, what should I do? Nine times out of 10, the reoccurring problems that I see are people are not uploading shorts of any value, mm -hmm. meaning they're just uploading a short of them just kind of looking silly or maybe they're just like walking down the street. or just, They're not adding any value. A lot of people have this idea that just because it's a short, it's doesn't have to be valuable. And that's simply not true. And value can come in forms of, you know, entertainment, or it can come in forms of teaching people how to do things. There's a million ways to be valuable, but it has to be valuable. Number one. And number two, you have to have an intro of your short. And this applies to YouTube shorts, TikTok reels, any of the short form platforms. The first second or two seconds of that has to grab the viewer's attention. If it does not, they're simply going to swipe. It's not like long form content. They give you a little bit more wiggle room there because they've clicked into it. 
they've made that decision. I'm going to click in. I'm going to watch this video. With a short, they swipe, and you have like one or two seconds to get their attention, or they're going to swipe onto the next video. It's too easy to swipe. So those are the two mistakes I see people making, not uploading shorts of uh, that have any value at all, or not uploading shorts that have something at the beginning that catches attention. Yeah, and I want to say something before uh, Nick would get your opinion. I am really curious to see, uh, you know, I've consumed enough TikTok, enough, enough YouTube shorts to have an opinion, and I want to kind of bounce this off of you guys. The future of monetization on that type of content, it kind of scares me, and here's why. Let me just put out the, my whole thought process on that, on this. If you're a company, you know, running an ad on a, on a short, or, you know, if, say we have like a short funds, like what YouTube's going to do, where they have like this, this lump sum that they're going to throw at creators to basically produce, you know, th th whatever it may be. I just don't know if that amount of time, that minuscule amount of time that people are there, I don't know what value as an advertiser I'm getting. Now, here's the thing. I understand as influencers, let's say someone's wearing something, uh, you know, or showing something off, that's great. But to go off of the point that D just mentioned, you have such a short amount of time, and we have such short attention spans now, that even if it's a short or a TikTok that I like, there's times when I swipe before it ends just because I'm ready to move on to the next one, right? So it just scares me just a bit about, I think we're going to have to figure out new ways to, to monetize and I think they are. I think TikTok and other creators and influencers have done that. People are making millions, obviously. So I want to hear your guys' thoughts on that. Uh, so now I'll, I'll hand that off over to Nick. So um, on shorts in general, uh, I think that shorts are a fantastic opportunity for new content creators. Yes. So I, I think it's a great opportunity for new content creators because it removes two extremely important elements when it comes to learning the process or going through the learning curve. So when it comes to YouTube shorts, you just have to be able to grab somebody's attention when they when they scroll, right? Like Dee was saying, you know, you have those first few seconds to, you know, just grab their attention. So you can focus all of your efforts as a new content creator just learning how to hook people. Like, hey, I'm just going to learn how to hook people. I'm going to learn how to give them a great experience in this short form content. Once I get good at that, then I'm going to try my hand at trying to make these longer videos that, you know, I also have to learn how to get people to click on. So that means I got to learn how to make thumbnails. I got to learn how to make titles. And I got to learn how to be a little bit more persuasive when people only have an image and a little bit of text to make a decision from. Whereas within the short, they just swipe up and then they get you, right? They get the they get the experience right there. So I think it's a great opportunity for people that are just getting started to get their foot in the door and to just gain that confidence. Because, you know, if you do have a little bit of, um, effort that you can put into it in terms of like, okay, let me just think this through with my type of content. How can I grab somebody's attention when the short first starts? Right. And then you just go through those simple, um, you know, exercises in your brain on how you're going to be able to connect with those people. And you just focus your efforts on those videos. It's just a great way to get your, your foot in the door. And you get that encouragement because if you can start getting just a little bit of results from that, it'll keep you fired up and motivated to keep going, which is a really big part of doing this whole thing anyway, is, is seeing through, the process of learning how to do all the stuff. So I think it's just a great way for people to get started. But on the advertising side of things, um, I think it's going to be a win. And the reason I think it's going to be a win for advertisers mm -hmm. is because just like we have shorts that pop up, I mean, of course, you know, we wouldn't have like an overlay ad on there. Um, but, you know, they're going to be able to embed a, a short ad in, you know, a nine by 16 ratio right there. So it'll just interrupt a, a, a swipe, right? So you, let's say you watch Dusty's video, you swipe up, you see this ad, and then you swipe up again, and then you see Dee's video, right? So I think that um, the way that they'll insert those, I think is going to be more seamless. And I think that if they do it that way, it'll make it less intrusive. And it'll also make people more likely to engage with the ads because it'll come across like it's a just another short that they're watching. So I think from an advertiser perspective, I think that I think that advertisers are going to just need to get creative on how they're running their ads because I think that the approach that people typically take to longer form content is um, is going to be modified or is going to need to be modified slightly 
in order to be able to take advantage of that same thing. Because as an advertiser, you're going to have to do that same exact thing. So the swipe comes up, you're going to have to be able to grab their attention and then bring attention to whatever product or service that you're selling um, or trying to bring attention to, you know, within that really short amount of time that you have. I think, you know, yeah, go ahead, D. Yeah, I was going to say, in addition to what Nick just said, and I agree 100%, in terms of monetization, um, you know, because if you have long-form content, obviously, depending on the type of content you make, your niche is going to depend or it's going to change wildly based on your content, you know, how much money you actually make, your CPM. We're not seeing that yet with shorts in regards to how much money, you know, in, in terms of a lot of money being made with shorts, unless you have a huge shorts channel, right, unless you're getting a lot of views. So unfortunately, you know what Nick said about, you know, it being great for new creators, I agree with that. I think it's fantastic for new creators. And I think that's why TikTok has succeeded. You know, there are so many people on TikTok, just grandmas on TikTok with over a million followers over there who just give life advice. You know, they don't have to make the thumbnail. They don't have to think about all this. They just pick up their phone, they hit record and speak their truth or whatever they're gonna say and they, and they publish it. But in terms of monetization, you know, a lot of those people are not making money. So people yeah. coming into, TikTok and YouTube, the amount of money that they're going to have to make, the amount of views they're going to have to get in order to be able to be a full-time creator, if they're only counting on shorts, I, I think a lot of new creators, they're, you know, they're going to have a, a wake up call coming. I think a lot of them are going to have to eventually move into long form content or possibly live streaming or something to supplement that income. Cause I don't think, well, not yet anyway, monetization from short form content is, is, is where it needs to be. So, so I think so. that's, that's kind of where I was getting at. I, I see that vertical video as a supplemental thing yeah. alongside someone who wants to be a streamer on YouTube. I believe there's going to be the outliers who can have a content ch a channel on YouTube that just focuses solely on shorts. I do believe that there will be those people. Don't get me wrong, but for the everyday normal person on YouTube, I do believe that there needs to be other stuff around that. Would would you both agree? Yes. 100%. Okay. 100%. So I guess in conclusion of, of this bit of the conversation, how do you, what are some tips and pointers that you can give people who are wanting to get into shorts that need to, to capture that attention so quickly? You know, for me, I know when I watch and consume, I don't know about you guys, for me, it's humor. It's comedy. It's it's that initial hook of oh that's this is gonna be good. There there is a guy on TikTok and he does YouTube Shorts too. I don't I, I'm I'm not into this at all, but it's called Brimming B R I M M I N G where he like he I'm he fills stuff. Afraid to look that up, Dusty. Yeah, it's not a, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. Calm down. It's not it's not a a sexual thing. I promise. It's basically where he fills containers up to the very top, and like he watches and, and re reacts to these videos. And if these people don't fill fill the cereal thing all the way up to the top. It just drives him crazy, and he goes, "It's he's hilarious. Like everything he says is funny. Uh, it's 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 just absolutely hysterical. It's so captivating." And I think of stuff like that where it's just like this silly stuff, but he's he he captures you so early on in in the video. Um, you know, Nick, we'll start with you, and then and hand it over to D. How do you how do we capture? people in today's society, Nick, where their attention span, which by the way, I think is a bad thing, having kids, you know, eight and under, um, how do we capture folks' attention in such a short amount of time? Well, I think that, um, you know, when people talk about, you know, intention, uh, attention spans, like one of the things that you see a lot of content creators talking about, or you saw a lot of content creators talking about um, when they first put shorts on YouTube, and you'll see people talking about it now as well as they're like, oh, yeah, they're 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 making it to where people, you know, won't watch longer form content because they have, you know, short attention spans. Um, I actually don't don't believe that. And the I, reason don't I don't believe yeah. that is because, you know, like like I'm sure, you know, everybody in this call will sit down and binge watch through an afternoon, you know, one hour video after one hour video after one hour video of a Netflix series. And if we're going to commit to, you know, Netflix like that and we're going to commit to movies like that. Then in that particular case, if you have a piece of content that you're really enjoying, you're just going to sit there and enjoy that content as long as you have the time to do it. So I think that it's not necessarily an attention span thing. I think that it's just something different. And since it's something different, I think that, um, you know, people just need to look at it for what it is instead of trying to say, OK, well, I need to take 
long form content and try to cram it into this short attention span box and just look at it as they're not necessarily watching that particular um, uh, you know, shorter, they're not necessarily in the shorts feed because they have a short attention span. They could be in the shorts feed just because they happen to see something interesting while they were on YouTube's homepage, YouTube homepage. Um, they could have, you know, saw a thumbnail of a short and a title clicked into that, that got them into the short shelf. And the next thing you know, they're sitting there. And instead of spending, you know, 15 minutes watching YouTube videos, long form, they're just spending that same 15 minutes watching short form content instead. So they're still engaged. They're still there. They're still paying attention. It's just changing from short to short, right? So because of that, like Dee was talking about earlier, the important side of grabbing somebody's attention to make sure you're not the person that causes that person to, you know, swipe as quickly is when it, when you're first putting your short together, you know, it's just important, just like every other piece of content to make sure that you're just thinking about the people that you're trying to reach. And when you're thinking about the people that you're trying to reach, it helps you set up anything that you're trying to do. So for example, you know, if you're making help content of some kind, then you would just start it by letting people know that you were trying to help them solve whatever problem it is. If you're making food content, then maybe you would show a, hey, I'm gonna show you how to make this thing while you're showing just some delicious looking thing with the voiceover part of that. And then you jump into the thing and you give your, you know, quick recipe from there. Um, so it's just, you know, knowing what the people that you're trying to reach with your content, what they enjoy, the types of things that they're into, the types of things that they might be looking for when it comes to short form content and then just leveraging, you know, all of that information to create strong hooks around it. How about you, D? Again, I, I agree with Nick in regards to, uh, uh, man, I'm attention. slamming it. I'm you're going killing hard. it, man. I, He's I, like, you're I taking all this wanna, stuff. I feel like, I feel like another emotional hug is in the works. Oh, here <laughs> we go. I uh, you know, in regards to, to attention spans, I, I believe there was some study that came out not too long ago. I saw somebody posting it where they did say, in fact, that people have lower uh, attention spans. But people just sat through three hours of Avatar and didn't get them to go to the bathroom. Right. Right. So, but, but we're not James Cameron. You know what I mean? So I think we have that. It's like people have attention spans for people who know how to hold people's attention. We're all just out there flying by the seat of our pants making videos for YouTube. We're not George Lucas. We're not James Cameron. We're not those people who have dedicated our lives to filmmaking that have learned how to tell stories and captivate. Those who can do that well, they usually have huge channels on YouTube. Like I will sit through really long videos from people like Johnny Harris, for example, teaching people why McDonald's ice cream machine is always broken, right? <laughs> I will sit, he makes 30 minute videos. I will sit through every single one of those minutes and not click away because some people have mastered the art of storytelling. So if you can do that, you're going to hold people's attention. So I think that's what it really comes down to. Yeah. I, it, I, go ahead. Uh, it, yeah. In, in regards to, you know, what can somebody do? Just like Nick said, you have to think about, who am I making this video for and what can I say or do or show the second that video shows, as soon as it loads up that first second, what can I say or do or show to stop them dead in their tracks, to stop them from scrolling and to get them to watch another few seconds. Mm -hmm. It might be something you say. It could be something you say and show at the screen at the, uh, at the same time. It could be like you were talking about with brimming. You know, maybe he shows that first. You know, it shows like what might be coming. Show them a preview of what, what might be coming. But I think the worst thing you can do is try to – like as YouTubers, we want watch time. Okay, we. I got to do this. I got to learn how to edit for watch time. I got to get people to watch another minute. I'm going to try to get them to watch another 30 seconds, another minute, because I want them to finish this, you know, five minute video or nine minute video or whatever. But the YouTube short, you have to hook them immediately and get them to watch however many more, however many more seconds that may be. And I, one more mistake I think people are making because just because a platform will allow you to make, say, YouTube, for example, you can upload a 60 second short. But if people are not completing that 60 second short, mm -hmm. you're not doing yourself a service. You need to make your short as short as possible until you learn how to get people to complete that short. Yes. Then and only then come back and make them a little bit longer. So if they only need to be 15 seconds, that's great making 15 seconds if people are completing them. Now maybe bump it up to 20 seconds and see if you can get them to complete that. Yeah, it's interesting to circle back to what Nick said and exactly what you just said, D. It's it's the thought of, you know, YouTube at the end of the day, they just care about time on site, right? Right. 
So, yeah. so for them, whether you're scrolling for 20 minutes or you're watching a 20 minute video, it really doesn't matter. You, you're on their platform. That's where they want you uh, to where they can it, it present you with um, the advertisers or, or whatever it may be. Um, so for them, it, it, it doesn't matter. So uh, I absolutely agree with everything you both said. So I'm not going to go um, any any more depth on that. I do believe in conclusion, though, um, it would be it would behoove you, as my grandmother loves to say, uh, to at least <laughs> at least learn and try to uh, understand, you know, YouTube shorts, because I, I do believe there are some skill sets, as both of these gentlemen have mentioned, that can be applied to everything you're doing as a content creator. Uh, we, we want watch time. Whether it's a short uh, uploaded video, uh, a YouTube live stream, we want people to stay on our video and stay on our channel and uh, in, in our content ecosystem. I love saying that. Uh, it just sounds so cool. Uh, stay in our content <laughs> ecosystem for as long as possible. And in order for you to learn that, you know, by figuring out how to captivate people on, within YouTube shorts can really uh, apply over to everything that you're going to do on YouTube. So that's kind of where I stand on that. I do believe that it's here to stay. I do. Uh, I'm much appreciative of YouTube figuring out how to house all of these different types of content on one channel and make them look very nice and very neat. Uh, and I do believe that's going to make just consuming content as people who watch video on YouTube that much easier. And as a creator, I give that a big thumbs up. A um, couple of things on a few minor things that have happened this year. Uh, thumbnails. Hey, Dusty. Yes. Hey, Dusty. Can I add one more thing before we move on? Please do. All right. If you're making YouTube shorts and you're just getting started and you're not having success on YouTube shorts, because first of all, right now, it is, I don't want to say it's oversaturated. I want to say competition is fierce. So I will say this, take that same video and upload it to Instagram reels, upload it to Facebook reels, upload it to TikTok. Because what I know all three of us have seen is some people will have success on different platforms yes. with the same content. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they don't do well on TikTok, but they blow up on reels, hmm. right? Or maybe they don't do well on shorts, but they blow up on TikTok. So yes. that same video can be put in front of different audiences on different platforms. So don't just try it on one and think that you're not succeeding. Mm. Discoverability is different on all of yes. those platforms too, right? So exactly. whereas, exactly. you know, Nick and D may get, you know, three, four, five hundred, a thousand viewers for their live stream on YouTube, they try to take that over to Twitch and maybe they only get a fifth of that, right? So it's right. it's because of discover lucky. <laughs> it's because of discoverability, right? So every platform exactly. is different. Every one of them has different ways to to get seen, uh, and so I completely agree with that. Um, right. With with a couple of uh, of minor changes, and uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting some. So if you guys would like to to chime in here, uh, I think that that would be uh, very much helpful. Um, but they made some changes with thumbnails. So I'm going to go through a couple of kind of rapid fire things uh, that we saw this year. Uh, we saw thumbnails get a a slight visual change. Uh, I do want to get y'all's opinion on that and see if it even matters at all. Um, the, the the preview, what do they call that, uh, guys, where you mouse over or tap over a video and you can basically start watching the video right there in preview? What do they call that? Yeah, it's the hover preview. The hover preview. Yeah, they have a name for it, don't they? Oh, I'm not sure. I think there yeah, is no, a name. I, I saw Renee Ritchie text, uh, tweet something about it, about the name of it. But anyways, that that kind of was was um, uh, improved upon this year. Uh, we also saw... Auto preview. Auto, auto preview. That's it. Auto preview. Um, yeah. we, we also saw some tweaks with the analytics, being able to see a few, uh, a few more uh, in-depth things that we uh, previously have not. I believe the YouTube uh, Studio app is getting better and better, as always. And then yeah. there also is an auto uh, chapter thing now that wasn't there where you can go in and I use I still use the TubeBuddy uh, tool that they just released this year because it's just for me I've been using it but both of them are great uh, options uh, where you know YouTube will auto place chapters uh, if you allow them to or if you check that box um, are there any other features small or large that were kind of uh, added or implemented or improved upon this year that you guys would like to, to bring up I love the entire visual update that they did everything about yes. the visual update. I love the curved corners on everything. I like the more muted subscribe button, even though it goes against that whole red thing that we've got all gotten accustomed to, but it was yellow before it was red. So that just yes, kind of shows, was. you know, <laughs> but like the entire visual update that they've done on um, computers and on mobile devices, they've done a just, they've knocked it out of the park in my opinion. Agreed. Love that. Yep. Yeah. YouTube is, uh, con the, the thing about this year, the theme this year is, just quality of life. 
there's just a lot of quality of life things that as a creator I'm so thankful that they're that they're at least working on. And I, I again I mentioned this at the top of the show. I believe it's it's having the right people in the right place. I mentioned Renee Ritchie a while ago. Um, I followed him forever. He is a very knowledgeable person, and he is now kind of a head of of of, of what is his title? Uh, yeah, he's YouTube liaison. liaison. YouTube liaison. Like having someone mm-hmm. like him at that in that role is just amazing. So uh, he actually helped me out with with a problem that I was having this year. So to have someone there, uh, a friend of the show, he's been on the show before. So that's uh, it's uh, it's good to see him there uh, and other people as as well. Um, so yeah, Renee is awesome. He is awesome. Um, so looking at the past and now to the future, twenty twenty three. Uh, I've got a bingo card here, guys. I want to know if you think any of these things are we're going to see in the next 12 to, I don't know, 24 months. Uh, AI. Okay. Yes. NFTs. No. On YouTube, NFTs? Yeah, like some type of implementation. I don't think they're ready for that one yet. Me either. Yeah. Okay. Your kids are going to love it. <laughs> You're not ready for this one yet. Your kids are um, okay. uh, paid, paid, uh, paywalls for content. Yes, it's already. It's already yeah, they, they, it's, that's it's already actually here. coming. Yeah, yeah. Like they, um, yeah, they've already announced that in um, 2023. Yep. they are going to put paywalls um, for content. So if content creators want to have like courses or just other paid things beyond their memberships, mm-hmm. um, they're going to be able to do that in 2023. So if you guys put your tinfoil hats on here. Uh, D, we'll start with you. I live in a tinfoil hat. Me, I don't know about I don't I, know about you, Dusty, too. but I'm I was actually yeah I, I actually my entire place is covered with tinfoil. Being a Star yeah. Wars fan like like we are, guys, we're always having the tinfoil hat on, trying to figure out what is going to happen next. Uh, I don't know about you yeah. guys. Has either of you? Uh, side note: Either of you watched the Amazon uh, Lord of the Rings uh, new series? And no, I just can't get into it. Can't I get tried. into it. I, Not I, your I, thing. Okay. I couldn't. All get right. Into it. Okay. Yeah. Then I'll just I'll cut that there. Uh, I uh, I've I've been watching a couple episodes and I'm I'm intrigued. I uh, my wife doesn't like it, so I have to watch it after she goes to sleep. But uh, with that being said, I I want to uh, figure it out there. Um, but with mm-hmm. our with our tinfoil hats on, if you were to give a theme for 2023 on YouTube, what would that theme be as far as like direction? And D, we'll start with you. Wow, tinfoil hat, the theme of 2023 for YouTube. That's it. So you're just asking what direction do yes, I think like they're heading? Yeah, like what's gonna be what's gonna be like we just talked about YouTube shorts, we talked about everything going on in 2022. Wow. Uh what what what's gonna be the overarching thing that we see uh kind of them focus on or their focal point in uh, in the new year? Well, I know this. I know that right now all of these platforms are are, are competing for creators. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. They're competing for us. I think we're in the best position ever Agreed. all of the platforms are competing for us so i think we are going to see more monetization possibilities we know youtube shopping is right around the corner i know mm-hmm. some people already have access to it mm-hmm. i think youtube is going to go heavily into youtube shopping um i don't know what they're going to do with ai but i know they're going to do something with ai i strongly believe ai for creators uh, i think it's going to i think it's going to turn a lot of things upside down and i'm here for it um uh, of course, I think they're going to keep going head to head with TikTok and eventually find a way to possibly beat TikTok at their own game. I think they have to. Mm-hmm. I think they have to figure out a way to outmaneuver TikTok. Um, so I think they're going to ship heavily with shorts, more monetization, more shopping. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they're going to implement AI, but it's going to happen. Yes. And when I say, I mean, they've obviously got. AI running on the back end, but the, something to help the creators. That's, I don't know that, what that that, that's kind of what I mean. More of a larger yeah. scope of like we, we're seeing these 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 steps of like what AI can do. Um, right. And it to me that technology with a, a company as big as you know Alphabet or Google and now and YouTube, I, yes. I, I I just have to believe they're going to implement it in some way. Yeah. Yeah. It's something that's going to help creators. I think we're going to see. I know they were mentioned. I was just talking with Renee Ritchie about this on Twitter. Uh, we're going to see at some time the ability to A-B test our thumbnails, mm-hmm. which is going to be fantastic. Yes. I, it, look, YouTube is going to – they're going to go all out in 2023. That's what I'm going to say. Tinfoil hat on. YouTube is going to go all out in 2023 to give us tools, to give us the things we need, to get in front of more people, to better understand the platform, to make more money. 
Um, I, and I'm here for it. I just wish they would improve their content ID system. A lot of flaws there. So I, I hope they improve that. Agreed. That's that's another that's a that's a topic for a, that's a, a whole podcast, an entire show. Dustin. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, Nick, how about you? I think that um, 2023 is going to be all about monetization. Um, I, I think, you know, with them, you know, rolling out the advertising on the YouTube shorts, which is supposed to drop in February. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that with them rolling out the course options with, you know, more content creators getting, um, access to the shopping, like Dee was talking about, they've already done the integrations with, um, like Shopify. So I'm expecting more integrations, um, in terms of like shopping options and things like that as well. Um, yeah, I think, I think monetization is going to be the theme for um for this coming year of course you know it's rumored that they're going to be doing a lot with shorts and with live streaming as well in terms of kind of filling those features out um but but monetization i think is going to be the way the, the biggest win for content creators in 2023 i think i think that exactly what you both mentioned is is going to come together as you know this year was the year of small incremental improvements of back-end things of things that youtube have you know we as creators have been asking for for a long time uh, they YouTube is now set up to take over. You know they've already been the king of you know recorded video, just normal uh, uploaded vods, and they have already brought over a ton of very popular streamers to, to YouTube live streaming. And they're already mm -hmm. releasing in February, like Nick said, uh, the monetization for Shorts, the the, the way they're doing that. Uh, which by the way, that YouTube, there have been years where we've done this show early on 2018, 2019, where YouTube had a lot of L's. Now, yeah. now YouTube has had some this year. Don't get me wrong; it hasn't been all roses and butterflies. I'm not saying that. YouTube has has put together a, a pretty good string of 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 months and, and year or two here, where I believe they are setting themselves up to be the king of all video content when it comes to streaming, uploaded video, and then vertical form short video. I believe they're setting themselves up to being just that one place that you go to. And that's obviously what they want to be. And I think that this 2023 is going to be the year of us seeing that and a year of, you know, D mentioned they're, they're fighting for us. They're, they're, they want creators. They want the, the people who create the content because without the content, they're nothing. And so right. with, with that being the case, Nick then mentioned, well, this is going to be the year of monetization. Well, how are they going to lure creators over? Give them uh, the ability to make money, money right? <laughs> money. Everyone yeah. loves money, right? They they, they yeah. want to be able to do this full time. They want to be able to have that carrot on the stick, right? Whether they're an hobby, a hobbyist looking to make a little extra chump change here to buy their next camera, or there's somebody who does this full time trying to make money to put food on the table – YouTube is going that direction, whether you like it or not. And I do believe there's going to be a little bit of side portion of AI uh, and some other uh, incremental stuff as well. Uh, but I cannot wait for the next year. And I, I do believe that going forward, um, you know, we're, we're going to see a big transition uh, to, to YouTube, not only just being the king of regular uploaded video, but shorts and streaming as well. And podcasts. You know, Dusty, another thing also is, yeah, um, and we haven't too. we haven't really talked about this in the conversation yet today. Um, in addition to, you know, shorts and, you know, live streams and all of that, um, YouTube is also putting a lot of emphasis on podcasts yes. coming up in this year as well. Yes. So, you know, for for just, you know, when you mentioned in terms of them becoming like a, just a media behemoth, mm -hmm. um, in addition to, you know, being one already, like, you know, putting more emphasis on podcasts even. So it's like, okay, they're doing their whole, you know, creator music so people can use that stuff on um, YouTube. They're going into, um, uh, you know, podcasting more. They're, you know, taking these live streamers over. They're, you know, monetizing so people end up leaving TikTok and coming over those types of things. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I, I think that, yeah, it, it's going to be a really interesting 2023. And it's almost like 2020 was there to sit there kind of fill in the rocket ship, right? Like, hey, yep. you know, we're just kind of adding fuel to this thing. And then uh, not a lot of things really transpired in terms of features, you know, things like that. 2021, they dropped, you know, a few new things. And then, uh, you know, 2022, they've just been, this last half of 2022, just been I created an entire news segment just to keep people up to date with all the changes that they're making. Exactly. So it's like, you know, like the amount of changes that are happening on YouTube right now, it's so rapid. And um, and I think that all of that is just going to accelerate in 2023. Imagine, 100%. imagine being YouTube and looking at the most downloaded app month after month after month, and it's TikTok, mm -hmm. right? Right? Ticks um, you off. You know what I mean? In fairness, I, I though, believe... everybody's already got YouTube. <laughs> that good point. <laughs> good point. Uh, but still, right? Like that, and and I believe TikTok was coming up too. If the, if they 
maybe even surpa- surpassed them for people actually using it as a search engine. I forget what the stats were on that, but I think more people were searching on TikTok than it, on Google. Something crazy. I don't remember what's on that, but I can only imagine that people who have the ability to make changes over there and seeing this sort of thing happen and seeing the, you know, well, well now you got Facebook Reels. They're offering a lot of money for people to make content over there. And mm-hmm. Like we got to do something. I, I'm, I, you know, like Nick said, I'm sure. Like you know, 2020, there were probably, or maybe even 20, 2021, they probably had meetings where they're like we got to circle the wagons, right. we got to figure this out because we got to come back stronger than ever and, and reclaim the throne. It does take time to implement all this stuff, right? Like they they sure. they saw it and they were behind the the ball when it comes to vertical yeah. video. They they could have been first to market, but they weren't. Um, and because of that, they were kind of behind the eight ball, and so we kind of see them picking it up. Uh, I think. I think of it a lot like Apple, right? Like Apple's never the first to market with with anything, any product. But what they do is they see what others have created and they just make it better. You know, they they just make it better. You know, um, for in, in a lot of instances. I know if you're not an Apple fan, you know that's that's fine. But for me, uh, they, they they. I mean, that's fine. Well, I'm just saying, fine. if you don't like Apple, I mean, that's <laughs> fine. I'm not going to sit here and judge, right? Um, Do people still use Androids? Is that, is that what you're trying uh, to say? <laughs> they, they may be an Android. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but I'm sure there, there, are, those, there are those folks out there. Um, I do want to uh, ask you guys this, um, as we're uh, nearing the 50-minute mark. Wow, this this thing has kind of flown by. Uh, it always does when I chat with you guys. Uh, this, has been, uh, this has been so much fun. I, I have so many things I want to ask you. So um, w- do you guys believe that in 2023 going forward that it's still possible to start a YouTube channel from scratch and be successful without question. Okay. I, I think there's never been a better opportunity to start a YouTube channel. And the reason for that is there's so many content creators now that are helping content creators navigate this stuff because in the past you had to just kind of come on and just figure it out and hope that you could, you know, get through the whole thing. Agreed. But now like you can spend like if you're a new content creator, you spend just a little bit of time on YouTube, they're going to show you some help content and that's going to lead you into more help content, more help content. And before you know it, you're going to you're going to you know be watching these videos and you're going to have a really good understanding of exactly what it is that you need to do, because channels like mine and these and yours, Dusty, and every other channel that helps content creators in some capacity, like like it's it's just a gold mine in terms of, you know, they're, they're the only thing with the learning curve is that you have to be able to manage all of the available information and just put steps together. Like, okay, I need to work on this today and this tomorrow and this the next day because it's all out there. All the information that you need out there to thrive, all you have to do is just find the information and then apply it to what it is that you're doing. So I, I think it's never been easier. I think the opportunity has never been bigger because now as we start pushing into the future, you know, like right now, like we've been talking about this, you know, for, for years, Mm -hmm. but right now, like everybody's hopping on board now, it's like mainstream to talk about the creator economy now. And, you know, because of that, it just shows the direction that all this stuff is going in terms of, you know, what the future is going to look like for content creators. And I think that if you are considering starting a YouTube channel, like Dee mentioned earlier, you should also, you know, repurpose some of those shorts that you're making and some of the content that you're making to some of the other platforms as well. So you can grow your entire brand, you know, through all these different platforms and reach all of these people all over the place. But I think that with YouTube specifically, I think there's never been a better time to start. And the barrier to entry is almost non-existent. If you have a phone, you can do everything it is that you need to be able to do in order to, to thrive on YouTube. I've been telling people that since I started my channel. If you have a right. phone, I, I literally started my channel on that. If you have a phone, you have enough to get started. And I agree with yep. everything that Nick just said. It is never too late to start a channel, especially in 2023. However, don't come at this. If you're thinking, hey, this is my year, right? 2020, there's someone out there listening right now, and they're thinking 2023 is my year but it's so saturated. It's oversaturated. I don't know how I'm going to get noticed in the niche uh, that I'm interested in. It's not that it's oversaturated. It's, it's in- incredibly competitive and you have to come at it with an edge. For example, let me give me an example. Let's say you wanted to start a new YouTube channel in 2023 and let's say it was going to be a cooking channel, right? You're passionate about cooking. I'm going to start a cooking channel in 2023. Okay. Well, it's going to, it's going to be incredibly fierce. It's going to be very difficult for you to be found with just a generic cooking channel. But what if you made 
fast recipes for busy moms on the go, mm -hmm. right? Now you have an angle. Now you're coming in and you're, you're kind of taking like a sub niche of a cooking channel and you're targeting a very specific audience and you're coming in and you're speaking directly to those busy moms and you're teaching them how to make fast, fast and healthy recipes for busy moms on the go, right? Come at it that way. Come at it at an angle it's going to be a lot easier for you to be found for you to find your target audience versus coming at it with a generic channel where you just have tons and tons of competition with a lot of authority. It's going to be really hard to be found that way. So it's not, you know, 2023 is a great year to get started, but you have to be smart about how you come in. If you were starting your channel today, Nick, mm -hmm. what would you do different? If anything, and and how would you what would be a couple of things that you would do in the beginning i have a um a coaching um not really a business but i have a, a this thing where i i get on with a few podcast people who who want to start a podcast and they ask me often you know what should i do to start the podcast and you know i have a, a couple of bullet points that i've that i've written down for myself that if i were starting a podcast today i would make sure that i would have uh, at least you know, five to seven episodes uploaded, and then at least 10 to 12 more, maybe even more than that in the can, I would have someone design a very high quality artwork for my podcast, I would go ahead and have an intro and outro recorded from a professional voice actor, I have these things in mind that, that, that I would put into place, I would have my target audience, my avatar kind of set there ahead of time. So if you were to start your YouTube channel today, what would you do? If I was starting today, the very first thing that I would do is I would get super clear, like when I when I started my channel, um, I just came on. I had no idea what I was going to do. I was like, hey, let's just make videos about things that I'm dealing with right now mm -hmm. and um, or that are, you know, within my, you know, reality at that moment. And I didn't have like a clear target of what I wanted out of it. I didn't have a clear target of who I was making content for. None of that. So the very first thing that I would do is I would sit down and I would figure out exactly what I wanted out of the effort I was putting into my content. I would figure out exactly who I was trying to serve with my content. And then I would figure out the best possible way to serve those people. So I would start there. Um, and then once I had that in play, then I would do all the things that you were talking about, about the, your podcast group or the thing that you recommend to them. Mm -hmm. um, I would recommend, you know, a similar thing in terms of try to get things to the point um, with the content that you're putting out when you're first starting it, you know, because everybody's going to come into it with, you know, different skill sets and whatever. So it would be to make sure that you get your content quality to a point to where the quality itself isn't a distraction. But even if it is, still publish because you need to work that muscle. You need to get it out there, see how people respond to it so you can adjust accordingly and all of that. But um, of course, I would try to make things look as good as possible. Um, I would have, you know, five to 10 videos that are just ready to rock and roll. But I would also make sure that you flush out all the video ideas that you have. So like, for example, some people will start YouTube channels and they think, hey, I'll be able to do this for, you know, a long period of time. But then, you know, six months down the road, a year down the road, they're like, oh, my God, I don't even know what I can make videos about anymore. That's it. And when that happens, then what they're doing becomes not sustainable. So because of that, I would also, you know, write down like, OK, these are the videos that I'm making first, but I'm going to write down like 100 or 200 video ideas just to make sure that this is going to be sustainable, at least for a few years. Yeah. So many people get to that point to where they're months down the line and they just had this block of, oh, no. I'm out of ideas. Um, you know, for me, it's hard to understand that because, you know, I do a tutorial channel. I have a YouTube centric podcast where I have Google Sheets full of things that I want to do. You know, it's just the, finding the time to do it. It's because I'm passionate and I love what I'm doing. But you could get to a point to where you're just like, oh no. And g getting rid of that in the beginning of knowing that you're never going to get to that point because you're doing something that's niche down. You're doing something that you love. You're passionate about. I love that. D how about you? If I were to start today, yes, I would. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give my advice to someone out there who would come to me and say, D I want to start my channel in 2023. What should I do? Because the advice would be the same. It would be, to reverse engineer the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I would first think about who do I really want to make videos for? Who am I trying to connect with? What age are they? Where are they at in the world? What language do they speak? What are they interested in? Right. I try to figure out who my target audience is first. Then I would start thinking about what questions and problems does that target audience have? 
I would go to Google, ask the public. I would go to all the places where I can figure out the type of questions that people are asking about particular things. And I would think about, okay, well, here's, here's the target audience. These are the problems that they have. And by the way, I would start with reverse engineering something that I'm knowledgeable about, right? Not necessarily, you know, follow your passions. I mean, yeah, that's cool, but what are you knowledgeable about, right? Let me back up here just for a second. Like, what are you, what are you really knowledgeable about? What can you speak about without any preparation? I would start there and re reverse engineer that, right? Target audience, what questions do they have? And then I would start writing out, right, video ideas for every single problem and question they have, that would be a video. And I would write a bunch of those out and I would start making those videos one after the other. And they could be short form content, it could be long form content, however you wanna do it, I would do it and just start answering questions, solving problems, and I would do it consistently. But the main hurdle you're going to have doesn't matter if you're doing short form, doesn't matter if you're doing long form, is that you do not yet have the skills to learn how to make videos. So instead of spending a ton of, and, and Nick, I'm sorry here, I'm gonna throw you under the bus. Instead of, oh, instead of spending oh. a ton of time, I mean, go, don't get me wrong, go watch some of Nick's videos, right? Go watch some of his videos, but don't spend all of your time watching his videos. Get a basic- Oh, come on, come on. No, I'm just get kidding. a basic I'm just understanding of how YouTube works, and then spend more time learning how to actually make a video, yeah, right? Yeah. Learn how to edit a video, learn how to make your audio sound good, learn how to communicate effectively, learn how to sound confident in front of a camera, learn how to do that. Because if you don't know how to make a video, nothing else that you do is gonna fall into place. Cause True. But that's, that's how I would approach it. Oftentimes it's paralysis by analysis in that that's my problem with like um, uh, pr productivity apps is that you spend way more time tinkering with the productivity app than you do actually being I, productive. Right. You, you know, Dusty, <laughs> I, and I think Nick can agree here, you know, in our live streams and people in comments and don't get me wrong, I appreciate every single one of them, but I, 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 and I tell people this during my live stream. Sometimes we'll say, well, hey, I don't have enough time. I can't, I can't find the time to make YouTube videos. What should I do? Well, why are you First watching thing me? I say is number one, get out of my live stream and go make a video, mm. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, audit your time, right? You, 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 I wish people would consume less and create more. That's big. Consume yeah. less and create more. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's, that's really good. Um, Guys, I, we could go on for multiple hours. Uh, maybe this is something that we need to do twice a year. Maybe do a do a mid year. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Do a mid year yes. kind of uh, check in, and yes. then an end of year. If you guys are up for that, that'd be something that, that we could possibly do. Always. Yep. I, know, I know with your time, it's it's very valuable. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of uh, put a hard stop on it now. Uh, if you're listening to this, I hope you're getting from this that listen. YouTube is an ever-changing platform. There's going to be ebbs and flows. There's going to be positives and negatives. But you as a creator really need to focus on what you do and your target audience and the people that you are trying to reach. There's so much good information here in this episode. Uh, but at the end of the day, Nick, D, nor myself, we can't do it for you. We can't create the stuff for you. We can't do it for you. All we can do is give you uh, some some guidelines, some things that, that we've done. But listen, uh, Nick, D, I appreciate you guys so, so much. Uh, in conclusion, can you guys let the folks know where they can get in touch with you if they're interested? Absolutely. Dusty, first off, you know, thank you for having us on. Super appreciate that, um, as always, my man. Um, but for me, nicknimmon.com. And then, you know, from there, you know, all roads lead to Rome, so to speak. <laughs> yep. And D, for you? Yeah. Yeah, likewise, Dusty. Thank you so much for having us on. I, I look forward to it every year. For me, you can go to dnimmon.com. That will redirect you over to my YouTube channel. I'm also active on Twitter, but you can find my Twitter while it still exists. While it's still here, yeah. <laughs> while while we still have Twitter, I'm active on Twitter. But you can find me by my name, Dean Demon, on almost all social media platforms. Beautiful. Well, this has been another episode of the YouTube Creator Sub Podcast. This has been our State of YouTube 2022 going into 2023. Thank you all for listening. Hope you all have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and we will see you in the new year. You've been listening to the YouTube Creators Podcast. We want to thank you and invite you to subscribe to the show, as well as support us on Patreon for great perks, such as having your YouTube channel featured on the show and a link on our website. Until next time, keep uploading those videos. Oh,